Hi everyone, this is Katina again um, from I Am One Ministries. Um, a little earlier this morning, um, I gave a word with respect to um, John chapter 10 um, um, with regard to a dream that I had um, early this morning of which the Lord um, had given me and I know he. this is something he wanted me to share and um, it's much needed word, um, especially for those who are either um, still on on the fence or practicing in divination or just those who are just just being misled misguided um, or who just otherwise don't know um, and it, it just goes to show you on um, you know John chapter 10 just teaches you how to hear or just know the Lord's voice um, just to know um, what would be a ministry of of God and you know what would be a person or a group of people or a body of Christ of God or a church of God um, who is just acting in um, and operating under kingdom values and true um, the, the truth and true Christian like ways um, they're not lukewarm um, they're not goat herders but they are actually um, shepherds and uh, sheep herders of um, up-and-coming sheep um, to shepherds um, or just, you know, whatever God is calling people or just whatever God has put in you from since he knew you before birth. So um, I just wanted to fo follow up a little bit more on that word. And um, again, I was reading in chapter 10. I didn't, um, I was supposed to go in like, you know, like chapter to chapter, but I just got a little bit, um, I don't want to say distracted, but just felt that I was, going in um as far as what needed to be explained um because not the entire chapter um i mean there was opposition not the chapter the entire chapter had a lot to do with what i was saying at the point in time or you know some of the things that i touched on um i didn't really get to all the chapter so um chapter 10 again jesus ex explains to jews you know it's clear and it's obvious that they don't hear his voice. They don't know what he's saying. They don't understand him. You know, it's one thing when Jesus, you know, he spoke to even his disciples in parables, but you know, they, they still kept coming. They still followed him. They didn't give him opposition. Like you see here, you know, here in chapter 10, you know, you got the Jews picking up stones, ready to stone them. And so if you're, if you got opposition, you know, therefore, you know, that there, there's a conflict. There is, um, there's already a difference there's already you know division there's there's not one accord on you know what you're you're hearing and and um and especially like if, it, if it's not in agreement with you you know to turn the other way but you know jesus is explaining that you know he is the door and you know anyone who is called by his name obviously they're bringing you through that same door so you need to look for you know an established um church um, body of Christ ministry, just whatever, um, who is operating in on that same accord and that same voice. Um, and, um, that, that the same values as, as God, you'll hear his voice there. You'll not only hear his voice in your own personal relationship with him, but his people, his sheep, his shepherds will also have his, will be speaking in his same voice. Um, in his same values by the same word um, and they won't compromise on the word um, you know some may slip and fall and may do certain things but for the most part a lot are striving to operate you know totally um, in the spirit and you know being of God and um, they're taking the, 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 the word for what it is the word is the word it cannot be compromised you cannot you know turn the word into what it you know, you want it to be otherwise is idolatry and therefore, yeah, you're still practicing in divination because you're making it to be what you want it to be. So, you know, Jesus in chapter 10 explains, um, you know, a, a hireling, um, someone who's appointed, you know, I talked about appointed versus anointed, anointed, you know, of, of God appointed. It's, it's a, by man, of course. And, you know, if you've been appointed, you, do you know what you're hearing? Do you know God? And, um, I was, I had made reference into the first video as well, um, with respect to, um, um, 
Philippians chapter one. So I'm also, I'm in Philippians and I believe the Lord is taking me through Paul's teachings because Paul, his letters, his ministry was indeed, you know, for us, you know, and you know, his imprisonment, just his life was for us. And when you pick up your cross and when you lay down your life, you know, it, it has value for someone else coming up behind you. And, you know, we have to see that. We have to know that. We have to understand that. So, you know, um, again, just coming in here with another word. Um, Father God, I, I thank you for your presence right now. I just want to go into prayer. Sorry. Um, Father God, I just thank you for your presence, um, of the presence of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you have your way. Um, I pray that um, you go before me. You you set the footsteps um, and, and just guide me in the way that I should go, um, the footsteps that I should follow. I pray that I decrease so that you may increase. May this word... Um, bless um the the uh hearers um the listeners the ears of this word and um and i just pray that it again not only be food for their bodies nourishment for for their souls and strength for their walk here on this earth and that it lot it guides them and leads them to where they need to be with you in this time um this critical time um, um, in this world. So Lord, I thank you. I bless you and I praise you and I magnify your holy name in Jesus mighty and precious name. I pray and seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Um, so yeah, so John chapter 10, you know, the Lord goes explain, he goes to explain that I am the door. I am the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. So he just gives several key things here as to who he is and um, what it takes to hear his voice, to know him, to know his people, to know his sheep, to know his shepherds, you know, you'll, you will, you know, um, fellowship and, um, converse against other like-minded people. So he's telling you, yeah, there are other, my people out there, but there's other people out there as well. Um, you will mix and dabble with, but you'll know to pretty much, you know, like how I explained the difference, you know, as far as like a sheep. And I wonder if I saved that definition. I don't know if it was on this particular tablet, but I did look up the difference between, I wonder if it's on this one. I did look up the difference between a sheep and a goat. And I was explaining that in the last video. No, that was on my other, other tablet, but it was explaining, um, you know, the difference between a sheep and a goat and the animals, it really goes to show you how they're in alignment with, you know, what God signifies. I mean, of course he, he knew what the sheep and the goats was going to be from the beginning because he's the creator. So, um, but it just goes to explain the difference between the sheep and the goat and, you know, sheep, you know, we pretty much, you know, kind of stay together with, you know, just almost like introverted or you just stay to yourself. You're not, you know, inclined to go and go, you know, do what extroverts or other people are like, you know, they, they, you know, come off maybe like as rude because a lot of, and then I was, I was, you know, told that plenty of times or I was just like I'm rude just because I was quiet or you know when you're an introvert and you don't really you know I don't know it's I don't know if it comes off as you know lack of confidence intimidation or whatever but you just never really that never was really your style or never really a thing to like kind of just be out there outgoing and whatever you we had our own ways of being outgoing and and self-expressive especially because you know for me I'm I'm very an artistic introvert and, um, you know, I don't know. I think like a lot of God's children are, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, he's, th there's various, but the most I run into artistic, introverted, left-handed, you know, there's quite a few things that I just find that it's just like, what? Like, so, but yeah. Um, and anyway, but there's like a, there's definitely a true difference. And I just know that, you know, goats there, I don't know that extrovert they don't pretty much like will listen they will pretty much lean on their own understanding or they you know it, it it just follows the lifestyle of the actual animal the goat so and then just looking at you know the diff you know how god is just um just showing us here and you know how the lord is speaking you know versus the difference between a sheep and a goat and it's just it's just so amazing so um 
he just, you know, explains how one will lay his life down and, you know, and how if the wolf comes, um, you, the shepherd will pretty much protect you, even your people, you know, even the other sheep, you know, we look after one another and, you know, you need to be in an establishment like that. Um, the chapter further goes on to talk about the opposition that Jesus had, um, with the Jews who were saying, um, that, um, okay, you know, who are you, you know, we're not, we're not, um, going to, we're not necessarily here, um, bashing you for your works. Um, even though that you can do these things, they just thought he was a demon. Okay. You could do these things. Okay. Anybody else can do them too, or whatever, basically what they were saying. And you know, you're just, you know, you're a demon, but who are you to say that you're a God or whatever have you? So, um, and you know, even in their own word in the law, and I was just explaining, um, in, in the first video that if you look in Exodus, yeah, um, God, um, gave, uh, Moses, the title, um, as a uh, lowercase G God over Pharaoh. He made him a God over Pharaoh. Um, he gave him that, that, that authority and that commanding authority, um, as God. So, you know, depending upon, you know, whatever your relationship is, and if God gives you command or, you know, tells you to do whatever and, and how you establish your relationship and yourself and your, your, your seriousness with your walk with him. Yeah. Um, you, you, you will take on that persona per se. And, you know, because God, again, word is bond is not lukewarm. And, um, so long as you're not, um, abusing or you know how to use that and you're operating in total um, truth and spirit, um, you can it can be done and you can act and walk in as a little G, you know? So, um, but I say all that to say, I just wanted to kind of give like a few little tips, um, as far as, or just like go elaborate a little bit more as far as like what I mean and, and hopefully knowing the difference, um, with, um, um, a sheep versus a goat and then the shepherd versus a hireling. And um, so I was reading in uh, Philippians um, chapter one, but I'm gonna start at verse 12 and I'm gonna read 12 through 18 where um, the setting is where I think Paul was writing to the Philippians and um, I don't think he was imprisoned at this point. I don't I think he might've been traveling. Um, but the, the subheading is Christ is preached. And so starting at Philippians um, chapter one, verse 12, but I want you to know brethren that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Um, so that it has now, so I'm sorry, so that has become evident to the whole palace guard and no, um, I'm sorry. And to all the rest that my chains are in Christ and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my change are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed pre preach Christ, even from envy and strife and some also, um, from goodwill, the former preach, um, Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter of, of love, knowing that I am appointed, um, for the defense of the gospel. What then only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this, I rejoice. Yes and will rejoice. So, um, Paul, he, um, he knows his ministry. He knows and understand why he is called his ministry and whether most of his ministry was, um, being in prison. Um, if that's what he was called to do, um, he knew what his, picking up his cross meant and to lay his, his life down, um, for his, his sheep. 
um, of who he was called to minister over. And, you know, look at how he said um, it made his, his chains, it, it, it increased the confidence of his other fellow brethren and allow them to be able to go out further. Like, oh, if Paul can do this and still rejoice and, and then still just have confidence and knowing that like, uh, like Paul wasn't in like, Oh, I'm in prison, you know, whatever. But no, he was in there like, Oh, Oh, you ain't said nothing word, but a word, what you, what you need me to do, Lord, what you need me to do. So, and, and those very letters, that's the thing. The, look at where the letters are. They they're right here for us. They're right here for the remnant. And he literally took the ball and went running with it. It's just like with Joseph. He, he, he knew that, you know, although Joseph, you know, his brothers, I'm talking about Joseph when he went to Egypt or his brother sold him into slavery or this, that, and the other, oh, his brothers would solve him like, oh, but he was in the right place at the right time. God had him, had him exactly where he needed him to be because his ministry was to bring up Israel from out of where they were, where they were going to be probably stuck into famine and they were fed literally and figuratively so um but it's just you you have to know your ministry you have to know god's voice you have to know your ministry and um it's just so much that's coming up out of this it's just so much revelation that is in these chapters which you know so align to us in this day because there was also another video to where i said you know stop knocking everybody you know knocking these other ministries first of all once you know the voice and, and these particular, you know, voices are, you know, in God, because Paul also says, and, and I forget where I was. Let me see. I'm, I'm going through Ephesians, Galatians. I don't know if it was between Ephesians and Galatians. And he said many ministries, one spirit. So God is operating very various many ministries based off a of need, based off of what people need. And that's how you're going to hear God's voice based off your meat off your knee and, and that's also why I'm saying if you're in an ineffective church or if you're in an ineffective ministry or just whatever have you know where know what you need and know where you need to go it is up to you and that's why it's your responsibility to have a relationship with God you know his voice you'll hear his voice not only from him but from other people your fellow brothers and sisters and then the shepherds you know, sheep, you know, you'll, that's where you'll hear. And that's where you'll know because everyone will be like-minded. You'll speak in the same language. It's like talking to you in the mirror, but your face looks different. <laughs> that's kind of crazy, but, um, you know what I mean? Um, is, is, you know, there's difference, you know, in who, You'll be talking to as far as the other person, but you're speaking the same language. You're speaking God's language. You're speaking love. You're speaking his voice. Um, you're, you're knowing his voice through him. And, um, but yes, uh, Paul was just basically, you know, he was just very confident. He said, my chains are in Christ and he knew what he was doing it for. He didn't make, um, he, he didn't make death out of the situation but he made light of the situation um and he added light to it and he added the light and the, the walk of christ to it and um so he he knew what he was anointed to do um it it's he also says some indeed preach christ even from envy and strife so I don't know if he was sitting up here referring to some, you know, goats out there, some lukewarmers and some also from goodwill. Um, the former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains. So he was being judged. He was just, you know, he was he was just warning them even then as far as the type of people that are out there who are not really walking in the true voice of the Lord. Um, and just also just shedding um, um, light on to like, and then just also rejoicing in the fact that, wow, you know, it, there are, you know, brothers and sisters out there that are just using this as strength. And because Paul looked at it and saw that it was his strength. And again, 
him being like because could you imagine if he wasn't in prison we wouldn't have this these letters and we wouldn't have this word and he knew that he needed to be there in order to bring us up and out and needed god knew through him he could feed him this word to give to us and so you know basically it, it pretty much is for the furtherance of the remnant. So when I read through these chapters of which I feel that the Lord is having me go through for my own, because I believe he has me going through Paul's letters, um, because it's very relevant to my walk between and, and my, our relationship, my relationship between the Lord and what he feels that I need. Cause I prayed on it and I asked him and I just said, this is what I need. And voila, here I am in all of Paul's stuff and it's just speaking so much light and light into me. So um I go when I go and I read a chapter, I go in and break it down in verse and then I go by that group of, you know, by that section. So Christ is preached that that section. Um what I took from out of that is so um that's the second section in Philippians 2. And, um, so in that second section, I have that as my rule number two. So when joining my rule number two is when joining a church, you must discern up front whether in the church or ministry, there is no God or they know God. So up front, you must know the particular church or ministry that you're either following following and fellowship with or whether you know it's members it's sheep so who you know it's sheep it's sheep <laughs> of whom you're in fellowship with or you know you must know up front whether that particular church or ministry whether you know there is no god there is not present i said that this in my earlier you know video as far as like you know, God just wasn't there. It just wasn't present. You know, it's, you'll know when God is not even present in, 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 in people because the operation, how they're operating, if they're not operating in love, they're not operating in his power. That person does not have God in their life. Is there, He's not pulsating in their veins. His voice is not even in that person. So there there's a that's another clue of knowing God's voice you you know God's voice through love you know God's voice through the actions of love the power that's the ultimate power love is the power so just operating in that power so this is a tool look for the love look for God's love look for his power look for his power of love you'll see that in other people you'll see that in their voice you'll know um, that in their walk, just in everything. And it won't be no, you, you can't, you can't, it's no double judge. It's no double judge. You can't be in, out, in, out. It's just always, that walk is going to be steady in God's power of love and in his voice of love. Um, you, and then love also comes with correction. It's going to come with those particular things. And more than likely you're going to get it from your father himself. You may get it from brothers and sisters, but you'll be in agreement with it because you'll rejoice over it. you you know, isn't, you're not going to look frown upon it. You know, I said this even before, you know, um, the flesh hates correction, but the, the spirit rejoices in it. Like when I get correction from the Lord, like there is like, no, I don't, I'm not sitting up here, like getting all up in my flesh and offended. I'm like, Oh, Oh, like I better repent. Like, Oh, thank you, Lord. Like I didn't know that. Like I'm just turning around quick and I'm like, thank you. Because I just like, no, that's another step up. That's another level up I'm on. And to the point to where like, I'm not letting this get me, take me down. I, I need, I need this because I'm just tired of the lies for so long to where you, you want up and out. So I'm, I'm trying to get up and out and I pray that you want the same. So that's my rule. Rule number two, when joining a church, you must discern up front whether in the church or ministry, there is no God or they know God. So, um, and then then some notes I made from that. So let's just say that you go to a grocery store and you, and, um, you go to a grocery store, you go to a grocery store, you know what you're going to the grocery store to get. You have going to the grocery store to get groceries, right? Okay. So no other places, like just think of other things. You go into a shoe store where are you, what are you going to, to the shoe store for? You going to go get shoes. Same thing as the church. Now, when you go to a church, what are you going there for? What do you need from this church? That's how you'll know. So 
I have as like a little tool, a tip. Write your needs on a, on, on a blank line, like write it, list it. What do you need from this particular church? If the church is not meeting your needs, then you are either in the wrong church or an ineffective church. Um, progress is what you want. Progress is what you need. Then progress is what you should get. If you need progress, if you need the place that you sh you need to grow, you know God is calling you. You just just whatever it is, or you just know. I mean, because not everybody is you know called to like you. Well, each minister, of course, love to each other. Some are shepherds some are yeah, i don't know in the marketplace to do good in various things or ways just whatever god like there's so much difference out here like we don't even realize that the beauty of god's work and what he's doing and what he has done so you know you just have to know your difference know your difference yeah you know your difference know your you and you know know your value know your walk you know it's not it's not going to be the same as mine. It's not going to be. So Paul knew his involved imprisonment and chains or whatever have you. So, you know, not everybody's is going to involve going to jail or just whatever. Everybody's ministry is just something different. And you have to know what your you have to know that you have to know their value. And then like, look at the things that even happened in the past. I mean, because, you know, Paul was persecuting, doing this, that, and the other, whatever. Okay. Maybe that was his growth in persecuting himself, you know, or in persecution himself. I don't know. But, you know, not to say that, you know, okay, this is what you get for doing this. No, God used that for greater good. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like I said, we wouldn't have these letters. I mean, because otherwise he was still ministering while he was in the church. And then who, you know, if he wasn't like, was, well, would we ever have seen these letters or would he have ever shown God's love even through that? Would he, you know, would he have been able to express it, you know, in any other type of letter, you know, so look at those tools. Like you, you definitely need to look at, you know, knowing, you know, the difference of, um, joining, um, uh, churches and know what you're going there for and looking at them as, you know, versus whether they're, um, the, the wrong church, you know, ineffective, um, because you may not be going to this particular church, you know, for shoes or for, uh, groceries. Uh, you might be going to this church for music. And if that church doesn't, um, specialize in music then it's not there for you so again if you have issues with um especially like i said in the last one demonic issues and needing deliverance and this particular ministry doesn't specialize in that because you know if, if god hasn't gifted you to cast out demons and teach you how to pray to keep them out and to keep you on the straight and narrow you need to be in that place that's going to help you with that and if 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 this particular you know church or ministry that's operating in truth and spirit if they know this they will lead you and guide you to a fellow brother and sister a shepherd who they know that this is their ministry i mean john the baptist i mean i believe he sent to Jesus, um, several, you know, you just look at the world, look at the stories as far as like who went where or what. And, you know, I just know I've been, you know, like a fish out, out of water, just going away from the stream of other fish to where God was, where I heard his voice and where he was guiding me. So, you know, this is, 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 is true and is key as far as discernment. Um, so I wrote a little passage as well. Um, I wrote that Christ is still being pre preached beyond the chains of Paul. Paul's imprisonment um, demonstrated Paul's love for Christ. And even he, like Joseph, recognizes that the things um, are used um, for the greater good and that these things are used for the greater good and for those that, are, that love him and are called according to his purpose. Paul's uh, letter to the churches were much needed for the remnant. Paul saw that this wasn't about being in prison. It was what he needed to do while he was there. 
Paul's um, ministry by no means was a selfish act or gain. If you are not in a church or with a ministry whose shepherd is not deliberately maturing you to move on to your purpose and willing to lay down his life for his sheep, then it is best for you to leave. Leave that place. Do not be there. And in this time and this hour, you cannot risk your life for some, you know, like, it's just like the blind leading the blind. Like, we just cannot allow um, our lack of, you know, knowledge and knowing. Um, and then that's the thing. Like, we're not, when we're not open to love, we won't know love or to understand it. So, you know, and this is in the, it was in another thing he said. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Philippians. It's Philippians 2, the actual next chapter. Because we're so used to not knowing what love is, Paul was actually showing them in chapter 2, like, okay, y'all got to go get knowledge first before you can understand love. And it, it that right there was so deep. And the way God was just showing me, I was just like, oh, my goodness. So basically it's just like, all right, y'all got y'all got it. All right, so in order for you to go and go, in order for you to even understand love, y'all need knowledge. And how are you going to get that knowledge? You got to go to God first. You have to have a personal relationship. So, you know, if like trying to figure out like where to go right now is a little bit confusing for you, start with the word. Go in the book. Go just sit like here, how I'm in, in my room and, and in the chair just start talking J just come out in truth and spirit he will hear you and he will know like listen god knows you just have to know and once you know you'll get that knowledge because knowledge is 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 that personal one to one relationship it is god and once you know god you'll know love and that's how you know god's voice and you'll hear it not only again through him, but his people. And that's when you now, you'll learn love. You'll grow in love. You'll build in love. And then, you know, you'll learn discernment too. So, because right now you can't discern if you don't know love and if you don't know God. Um, so, um, I pray that that right there didn't confuse you, but... Because I feel like he's, I just got a big old smile because it's just like, he's just like, like, yeah, get it, get it, get it. Like, like, yeah, you doing it. So it's, it's just like, it's just so much revelation and just so much like remembrance on what I've got from my reading. Um, when he and I are together, that it's just so much stuff popping off in my head right now to where it's just, it's just so many dots being connected. If you ever seen a dot to not dot to dot, that's how revelation is with the Lord is because is, is he going to connect you from number one to number two, to number three, to number four. And, and at the end of the day, he going to draw that little heart and you going to see that, that them dots connect to love. Um, so, but yeah, usually like, well, in my little teachings to myself and I'm I know because I know the Lord is raising me to teach I guess pretty much what I am doing now um and <laughs> yeah I had a little something something going on this morning with re with respect to what I should have been doing um which is here now and I don't know I just start to do something else and just yesterday I was just telling my husband you know, I need to stay on point and being obedient. And what did I do? I got up right into my own and then thinking and then, yeah, my own thinking. And then I felt, I hear, I felt the God's voice in my heart. And then, and I just started like, like, okay, wait a minute. I feel like something's wrong. Cause I go through these palpitations, like in a sense. And yep. No sooner than I just sat down, just started praying. And I'm like, all right, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? Because that's one of my ways of hearing his voice. Um, because even um, I'll explain before how I was in on one of Brother Tommy Arayomi's um, um, classes, lessons, you know, mentorships. Um, he said God's voice is like heartburn. Um, but I didn't associate it with heartburn. For me, it comes in like heart palpitations. And so that's a way I usually hear the Lord's voice. It could be for me, like if something's like wrong, if or it could be no. 
Um, I'm just picking up all the ways that how I hear God's voice and how I identified or associate them based off the events that occurred. And it's kind of crazy. So everybody's going to be different. I don't know if this will be helpful for you, but yeah, I started to do something else this morning and I got and, um, and I was, I was, I started to get upset. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like what is wrong? And I'm just like, okay, am I not supposed to be doing? Cause I literally started cleaning up the room and you know, I started, you know, getting some clean, you know, stuff and yeah. And then I just like sat down. I'm just like, um, um, and just, you know, sitting up here boldly explaining to my husband yesterday, like, I got to start treating this like a nine to five. If I was still working my corporate job, I wouldn't be sitting up here doing other things on their time. So I can't be doing this on God's time. And then what did I do? Get right up here and start doing other stuff on God's time. So yeah, right here, I'm in this video and, um, but he's just, it's just like, it's just some good stuff popping. But I just pray that, you know, you all know that, you know, um, it is very critical in this time. I don't know where you are in your step, in your walk, in your life, you know, that you, you must know the Lord's voice in this time. Um, get into that secret place. Um, give him your first fruits and your last. And when I say that, wake up in the morning, um, um, just in fellowship and in, 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 in worship. Um, my worship. I didn't, I didn't know those things. Again, like I said, I wasn't in church, so I don't know these things. So I was just doing, and it was just, God will meet you where you are and he'll meet you with where, you, you know, whatever you knew, whatever you know to do. So I would just start talking, you know, didn't know my talking was prayer. It, he, hey, you coming. So he just like, all right, she coming. She hungry come on baby come on <laughs> so and then that's what I just love about the Lord because someone told me that um that that the Lord was telling them that they like he likes the way that I go into the park and I worship and I didn't know that my running and going into the park um in that particular sense um was was worship I was singing. I would be singing particular songs that I knew was for him and me. And I didn't know that that's, that was called worship or what he enjoyed. I guess he knew from my heart and my spirit that I was singing and I was rejoicing and, and, and with him. And I was just so thankful all the more for it and that he was um, bringing me to, to understand and know that, you know, you may not have been in church and you may not have, you don't know the general lingo or whatever, but you was actually doing these particular things between you and I, and, and I appreciate what you were doing. And I, I'm just so thankful just, just to know. And, you know, even when I'm saying thank you and, and, and just, you know, worship, praise, praise also too. I'm just, I just learned to praise, you know, thanking the Lord, just like thanking him for whatever. It's just like how I said before, we'll like, oh, you know, your child draw you a nice little picture and you be like, oh, that's cute, baby. You know, what is that? And it's just like, you know, we got to give the Lord the same acknowledgement. We have to, you know, allow the Lord to to see that yeah you know he has value and he's present in our lives and just as well as you want to give a child acknowledgement over a picture they drew you know god he needs acknowledgement as well too and we can't we're here just because we can't see him it just we can't just sit up here and just think that he's not here you know, so, um, after all he made us, we, we didn't make him, we can't make him. That's why we can't sit up here and practice and divination and then know what we think or who we think God is and, and just make him to be who we want him to be. You know, it, it's, it's not even possible. We can't even live long enough to even say who we want or want what God should be. How do we sit up here and think that who we know who he is? So that's why it's important you, you, you go somewhere to where they know God. They truly know God. And you definitely don't want to go anywhere there where he, he isn't at all. He doesn't even exist. So, you know, I just pray that this word blesses you and that you know, like, you got to treat 
church just as well as like you're going into one of your favorite stores, whether it be a grocery store, whether it be a clothing store, whether wherever you're going and what whatever you're seeking, know what it is that you need. Know what it is that um, you want for your life. Um, whether, you know, there's so many different ministries who are investing back into the sheep um, that, that, that are, you know, in, within their congregations, within their fellowships and, you know, stuff like that. And, and, you know, know what you need. Don't just go someplace, um, just because, you know, it's fun or just because this person is there. It may not be for you. Um, so just, you know, practice, and ha having that relationship and fellowship with the Lord yourself first before um, actually, you know, joining in. Um, or just, you know, you actually may hear. You never know. You, everybody's walk in their way is different. So um, just, just take a deep breath, take a step back, and then just really um, identify your walk. Um, discern, like know what the Lord is trying to say to you and, and, and show you in this time and this hour. You know what you need, know more than the next person does. And, you know, um, you'll find a shepherd um, that um, he, he because he is operating in the true um, walk of God and he's taking his walk so seriously, he himself is trying to make his way back home. And um, he'll have just as much of a, an invested interest as you because he's responsible for you as he would be himself, you know? So it's just like what Paul did, how he knew his responsibilities even from prison. Um, okay, I'm up in these chains, but um, could you give me a pen and paper? I got some stuff to do. I got I got stuff to get out. So, you know, he's he still had people that, that needed some direction and guidance and basically, you know, the example of which he was able to show him, show them through, you know, his walk. He said, I'm change, I'm in change for Christ. You know, this is my cross right here. And he was proud of it, was not ashamed of it. And he was like, yo, oh, I'm about to get this off. So yeah, he proved his point. Here are the letters right here in the word. And it's, it's teaching us, it's raising us for, for something so much more than we could he couldn't even if Paul could come back and see where we are right now he was like oh that's what's up because <laughs> he'll know the value that he added to this time and you have to understand and know the value that you have to add for your time and to come because you know we all have a place and a purpose God ain't wasting not one life that is going to be born into this world it's, it's not so know your value, know where you're supposed to be. Do not sit up here and invest your life and time in places that where there's no God, but they know God. Um, and know that you're, um, you, you know, a shepherd, you know, or you're amongst sheep who will lay down their life for you. Because at the end of the day, we know where we're going. We know where we're going. So we're not afraid because, you know, again, if, if, if a hireling, they see a wolf coming and then first of all they haven't been taking care of the sheep from the beginning it, they it was just on like how paul was saying in, in in philippians um where christ is preaching when he was saying about the other you know the other ones um if they're just what they're about if if it's about their own selfish means or gains and then there's no invested interest you interest in you but whatever they can get from you or whatever having you know you have no growth and you continue to still sit in the same mud then that goes to show you right there they're not of god they don't know love they don't know love so they don't know god and you know you have to know god in order to know love so if and that's how you know somebody's operating in divination because the the, the shepherd the, the one who came through god's the sheep's door, the shepherd's door, who, who God now is sending out for pasture, they only operate in love. They only know one thing. And then that's it. You know, that, that you know, we know a lot more than one thing, but you know, that's going to be like the main basis for our walk is love. And it's going to be nothing of ourselves, no selfish means, gains, or motives. It's just going to be just, just that. So, 
Um, I just pray that this word, you know, blesses you and you, you take it and know it, you know, for what it, it is, it's definitely going to be, you know, you maturing in your walk and you also getting what you need. Again, if you dealing with anything, you know, any type of demons, just whatever have you know that you need to be in a place that's going to be casting them jokers out because just as well as demons get casted out, they're going to come back and they're going to try to come back strong into the place where they was, you know, the scripture is there. Um, so, um, I pray that this word blesses you pray that it just wasn't like just as ramble rambling as the first one, but it, it gets there. I'm getting better. God is working on me. So long as I do what I'm being obediently told to do, I'm going to get better and stronger and I'm going to go out and I'm going to go get my ones. So, um, if you're the one, you know, just know that God is going to rejoice in heaven over you over the 99, just he got sitting over there behind him or whatever have you, because he's coming to get you. He's coming for you. I'm coming for you. And I just pray that you find your place, um, you know, in the kingdom in God's body and in God's heart. I love you. I bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.